I want you to turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 8, if you will, please. Luke chapter 8. <clears throat> Luke chapter 8. And we're going to read a passage together from verses 26 to 39. That's great to hear the pages of the Word of God turning, aren't they? Isn't it? What a blessing. Unless you have your, some of you have your, your computers out, you look, calc yeah, yeah, I know, I have it, my Bible on my mind as well. So, but I'd rather use my Bible. <laughs> I can see it better as well. All right, well, let's stand together as we read responsively 26 to 39. And they arrived at the country of Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he, you want to read with me? And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. Now join me in verse 29. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oft times it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and fetters. And he brake the bands, and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. That he would command, okay, that he not command them. They, and there was there and heard of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. In other words, he permitted them. Verse 31, 33. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. When they, uh, when they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting in the feet of Jesus clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid they also which saw it told them by what means he was that that was possessed of the devils was healed then the whole multitude of the country of the gadarenes round about him he sought him to depart from them for they were taken with great fear and he went up into the ship and returned back again now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way, and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. And let's pr pray together. Father, we thank you this morning for the word of God. We're thankful, Lord, it's a lamp on our feet, light on our path. We're thankful for the privilege of being um, among God's people uh, and preaching the Word of God. We pray that you'd speak to our hearts, that you conform us to your image, that you make us more like we ought to be. And Lord, that if, if there's anything in our life that uh, needs to be cared for, needs to be taken care of, I pray that you'd address that need this morning. Uh, Father, for those who may have uh, sin lurking in their midst, Lord, we certainly want to defeat the devil and the purposes he has, even to render us uh, uh, not useful to you. And we pray that you'd help us as children of God to rise up and, and call you blessed. Lord, thank you for brother, uh, our brother that we're taking his pra uh, place here this, this morning. Uh, brother Barbosa, I pray that you bless him and his dear wife as they are away from us, that you'd protect them, that you'd use them mightily where they are to bring others to Christ. Help each one of us to understand your word. Apply it to our lives, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, most of the, those who have been saved uh, for any length of time have experienced God's power in their lives. 
And uh, many have been delivered from bad habits. Who'd say amen to that? Amen. that God's, God delivered me from smoking and drinking and cussing and living, living, just living wrong. And I'm, I'm glad for God's power in my life uh, from a bad habit. Uh, some from terrible attitudes, hatred, bitterness, jealousy, uh, things that really are self-destructive. Yep. You know, we don't realize how uh, they, they ruin our own lives. They, we think we're jealous of someone or we hate somebody that, it, it, that it's a blessing to us. It's a, it's a curse. The, the Bible's full of g- stories about God's power and the victories God wants to give Christians. And, and just for example, uh, the blind man healed. I love that, John chapter 9. Uh, you, can you imagine being blind all your life and then having somebody touch you and all of a sudden you can see how blessing that was. And then the daughter that was brought back to life. Ma- imagine having someone that, that you love so much and that precious little girl and then uh, the miracle that took place, the deaf heal, hear, being able to hear, the lame being able to walk again, demons cast out of a man. Of course, that's what happened in the story that we just read. Yet a lot of Christians languish in a powerless state, not, having, not being victorious Christians. And uh, that's what we want to talk about this morning, uh, the power of God. Because really, we don't want to be impotent as believers. We want to have the power of God in our lives so we can do the will of God. Amen? Um, and so as we read the Bible, and I hope you have a daily reading Bible schedule that you follow, uh, and you read through the Bible. We try to do it every year. That's beside the, our personal Bible study. We try to read through the Bible together as a family and then take, take a half hour to pray uh, every morning and every night and uh, then sometimes during the day as well. But re- you ever heard that song? Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll what? Grow, grow, grow. grow. And that's what we want to do. Read our Bible so we can grow in the Lord. But then another thing, area of of failure, is uh, not to put into practice the things that we read in the Bible. You know, the Bible says in James chapter 1, it says, Be a doers of the word and not hearers only. A lot of people hear it, but they don't put it into practice. And, And it's so futile for us to read the Bible but not practice what it says. And yet God wants us to put it into practice. Um, and, and then there's a, one of the saddest verses in the Bible is Matthew 23, 3. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but not after their works. For they say and what? And do not. They say and do not. And that's a tragedy of, of many Christians. They, they talk a good Christianity, but they don't put it into practice in their daily living. Uh, and number three is a, another failure is a failure to witness. The, the Lord said, be, you shall be witnesses unto me. Ma- Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Matthew 28. How many know that passage? Verse 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and what? Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and teaching them to do all things whatsoever commanded you. Now, if I teach you, if, if I teach you how to get saved, then it's my responsibility to teach you how to go out and get other people saved. So we're not, we're not in this by ourselves. And uh, then, then, so that's one of the great tragic th- tragedies, I believe. And then the failure to love the Lord with all your heart. You know, I love God. I, I love the Lord. Down in Florida, where I was pastoring for eight years. I'd go up to somebody and they'd be s- drinking a beer and smoking a cigarette and cursing their wife and I said, I'd like to talk to you about Jesus. Oh, I know Jesus. I said, have you been, sa- have you been born again? Oh, yeah, I've been, I've been saved. But there's no difference, no change in their lives. And yet the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a what? A new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I ought to be different. Amen? I, I know I, what I was before I got right with God. Uh, you know, I had a motorcycle and a car when I was in college. And uh, matter of fact, I, I took the motorcycle. <laughs> this is just a side story. I took it I, 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 right before football practice. I took my wife for, a, she wasn't my wife, she was my girlfriend. 
And I said, here, you drive it, because I've got to go to practice, you know, football practice. She never knew how to drive it. She, <laughs> she didn't know how to stop and go, so she just kept on riding around, hoping that, you know, i get through quickly, I suppose. But anyway, <laughs> I, those are strange days. But to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength and all your mind, how, how well do we really fulfill what God asks us to do? So what, why is the power of God essential in our life? Number one, I think, to have a good relationship with him. First of all, to have a good relationship. Secondly, to have a right relationship with your family. I, I know we have families that have nothing to do with other, other members of their families. They get bitter. And yet the Bible says the root of bitterness will defile us and many will be defiled thereby. You know, I, I, whether your family is right with God or not, you still got to love them. Still gotta, God loved you when you were unlovely. Amen. We still got to pray for them. Still, yeah. still got to encourage them. Uh, you, don't, I don't, you know what? I, I, I heard years ago, God doesn't have a junkyard. He doesn't, have a throw, he doesn't throw people away. He brings them to himself. Amen. And so we, we have to keep on praying and trusting God to help us to do the same thing. And then thirdly, to have the best influence on those whom we know and meet. Uh, of course, that's be, you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And then fourthly, to be victorious in our battles against Satan and the flesh. Boy, I tell you, that, that is a battle, isn't it? I tell you, this coronavirus... <laughs> <laughs> I've been struggling with this thing right here <laughs> because it, it seems like it's gotten larger. And, you know, and I, I, I told my wife, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm working at it, but I'm not working very hard. <laughs> you know, you try to get exercise. And even when you're out getting exercise, it's, it's difficult. Uh, and then they have a, worth, a life that's worth living. I just want to go from start with number one, the power of God to have a right relationship with him. And, and, um, I take this, if you take your Bible, please, and it's a familiar passage, but I don't want you to put your eyeballs on it. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. I hope we jump around here a little bit. And if it doesn't, if you don't find it very quickly, I'll probably read it before you find it. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, and you, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and read it with me, will you please, the rest of it? And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Wow. That's what we have to do after we get saved? I guess I do need God's power, don't I? Yes, it is what we have to do. Uh, you know, when I got born again in 1957, that's before a lot of you ever heard of. <laughs> you know, nobody ever, okay, 19, I was 12 years old, a 12-year-old boy. I, I went to a Bible school, and, and uh, this man said, Richard, are you born again? He was Scottish. Are you born again? I had no idea what born again meant. But he told my friend Gary and I how to be born again. And, and we both prayed. We knelt down right on the front of our, our church pew, and we accepted Christ in our heart as our Savior. Wow, that was amazing. I remember walking down an alley of our street and a car almost hit us. I thought, I would have been in heaven. That wouldn't have been so bad. You know, <laughs> not that I, my life, not that I was trying to be careless with my life, but, um, but, but it, it just changed me completely uh, until I got away from God. I did w waste several years uh, where I was away from God. I'm glad that the Bible says, whom the Lord loveth, he what? Chasing it and scourgeth every son and receive it. Amen. And uh, in 1970, uh, when I was 25 years old, and that's part of my testimony, um, we weren't walking with the Lord. My wife had just been saved, but um, my last day in the Army, I was heading to McDill Air Force Base in Florida. Uh, that's in Tampa, Florida. I was heading to McDill Air Force Base, and a Buick ran a stop sign. I was in a Volkswagen bug. You don't want to be in a Volkswagen bug when a Vic. Buick runs a stop sign because I, I ended up with a head full of glass, my chin split open, and I, I came to in the windshield where, my, where the windshield had been. My chin was there now. And I said, please, can somebody get me out of here? Well, to make a long story short, 
I ended up in an ambulance. And I really didn't know much between the, those times. And I was on my way to the hospital. Uh, I don't know if they were taking me to the morgue or to the hospital because I think it was a hearse that they took me in. Maybe they didn't have enough ambulances. But I came to, and I thought, I'm scared. I, I'm, I'm, I'm frightened. Have you ever been frightened like that? I, I thought, I'm going to die. And then I realized I could die, and I thought, what am I worried about? I'm saved. Well, I hadn't thought about that in years. I hadn't walked with God for a long time, but I knew I was saved. I said, go ahead and take me, Lord. And the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart then. Maybe I've, you've heard this before, but he spoke to my heart and said, what about the way you've been living? Don't take me yet. Now here, I was strapped inside the ambulance, okay? I'm st strapped inside the, whatever it was, a hearse or an ambulance. And I said, don't take me now. Let me talk to you about my sin. And I honestly, <laughs> I had to talk to him about my sin. And I was so sorry. I said, I'm so sorry, Lord. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. And I was weeping and I said, I wasn't sure if I was saved. How could I live a life without, like I was living and not be saved? So I said, I'm not sure I'm saved. Please save me. And I said, okay, I'm ready to go. I was ready to go. Ready to go home. Ready to go to heaven. And, and it dawned on me. I said, well, Lord, if you want me to stay here, and, and I said, uh, then I'm going to live for you. And we started living for Jesus in 1970 right after. And when I called my wife, who was in Illinois at a wedding, and told her, she said that this peace just swept over her. Now, she's not Pentecostal, but she, <laughs> but she had a peace that swept over her. Why? Because she knew that she'd been praying for me to get right with God. And God, God was doing that. And I'm thankful for that today. Uh, it was several years later that God had called me into the ministry, uh, which you probably would not guess unless I told you. And I was just kidding. Uh, so number one, the power of God to have a right relationship with him is so vital. Uh, there's... Uh, Five glorious things in this verse. Turn to Acts chapter 26, verse 18. Acts 26, you're already there in Acts 26, verse 18. Five wonderful things <clears throat> that reflect the power of God in our life. Number one, to open their eyes. Isn't that what God wants to do in us? Let's open our eyes so we can see, so we can see the things of God. And to turn them from darkness to light. Is that what happened to you? You got turned from darkness to light, didn't you? Right. Amen. Good. And then it says, from the power of Satan unto God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Did you get turned from the power of Satan unto God? That's what happened when you got saved. And then what does it say? To receive the forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. That's what I got. And the inheritance of, among them that are sanctified by faith that is in me. Isn't it wonderful? That, that's a description of what we had when we got saved. Sanctification. Growing in grace. Being, being more like Christ. And it comes through one's relationship with the word of God. Isn't that really what, the, what, what happens? God's word works in us. Read it. Read your Bible. Pray every day. Pray every day. Pray every day. Read your Bible. Pray every day. And you'll grow, grow, grow. Neglect your Bible. Forget to pray. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. So what are you going to do? Read your Bible every day. Amen. By the way, memorize verses that mean a lot to you. How many have a verse that they've memorized? Read, anybody? What, can you give me a verse? Give me a verse. Oh, I love that. Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Somebody else, give me a verse you memorize. Romans 8.28, for all things work together for good to them who love the Lord, to them that are called according to him. Amen. Romans 8.28, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and that are called according to his purpose. Yes, ma'am. Amen. What, what verse is that? Okay, <laughs> Timothy. I think, right? Timothy. Okay, so okay. So isn't it wonderful? You can you can tell me a verse. The verse, the only verse I can remember from when I was a boy was John three sixteen. Quote it with me. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's what I did when I was 12 years old. I accepted Christ as my Savior. I called upon him. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, remember, this, this ha the power of God uh, having a right life. Read your Bible, believe it, and heed it. Number two, the power of God is essential. I, I better be careful. I'm going to extend too long here. <clears throat> it's essential to having a right relationship with your family. Did you know that? Having a right relationship with your family. Um, <clears throat> I read a letter not too long ago about it from, a, from a lady who had written to me and said, pray for my husband. He hasn't come home in two days. He, he's drinking and smoking and living. I don't know how he's living perhaps immorally. <clears throat> and, and she wrote to me and asked me to pray for her husband. That God, now I, I think they're back together, but I'm not sure if, if, what their life is like at this point. But I know that God answers prayer. Amen. Amen? And, and uh, so, but how tragic for somebody, really, really that, that's, that's a scenario that replays over and over and over again. So what did he need? What did he need? He needed God's power to live a holy life. You know, what's the Bible say? Be a holy for I am holy. God wants us to be a holy people. Holy means godly. Uh, you know, uh, the Bible says husbands love your wives. Well, if I want to have a right relationship with my family, my, my first responsibility is to love my wife. As how do I love my wife? How much? Like Christ loved the church. And gave himself for it. So I love my wife unconditionally. And, and then she responds to that love, doesn't she? And so that loving relationship. Then, then what do you have? We have children. How many have children? How, what does the Bible say? Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, sometimes our kid, I have a daughter right now. She's not, as far as I know, she's not walking with God. But I love her, and we're going to keep on praying and keep yeah. on trusting God to bring her back to him. Amen. I really believe God's word is true. Train up a child. We, we believe that's true. So we're going to keep on trusting God to answer that prayer. Uh, now, how is your relationship with your family? How's your relationship with your family? God can help us to improve those things, can't he? Amen? He can help us to enrich the lives of the... Listen, don't give up on people. They're not, I, I heard a preacher, uh, one preacher said, I heard him years and years ago. He said, uh, don't have anything to do with your family. Don't have anything to do with them. They're not walking with God. Don't have anything to do with them. I don't agree with that. I think we're supposed to keep on reaching out to them. Keep on letting them know that we love them, that God loves them, that we want to see them walking with God. Don't give up. Don't give up. I just don't find that in the scripture that you give up on people. God didn't give up on you. Amen. Amen. I don't think we ought to give up on others either. So don't give up. Don't quit. Keep, keep praying that, that God would bring them in. How's your relationship? Now, listen to this verse, Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah! That you can abound with hope. Amen? That means you don't say, oh, uh, I'm going to give up. No, don't give up. Right. Hey, don't give up. Don't quit. God can give you a, an abounding hope. So the, here's a question. With your family relationship, is there love? Beloved, let us love one another. How many know that verse? Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another. First John 4, 7 and 8. Memorize those verses if you would. First John 4, 7 and 8. Do it by tonight. <laughs> Come back tonight. I'll give you a gift. <laughs> now, <clears throat> number three, we need God's power. Now listen, I need God's power to have a right family relationship. I need God's power to be the best influence in others that I can be. 1 <clears throat> Timothy chapter 4 says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou a what? An example. Go ahead and turn there. I want you to see it. Put your eyeballs on it. 
First Timothy chapter 4. Primer Timoteo capítulo 4. Verse 12. 12. First Timothy 4, 12. No habla español. I try to speak Spanish because my church in Florida, most where I was pastoring, <coughs> most of my people were Spanish. Matter of fact, one Sunday <coughs> after we had hurricanes, three hurricanes in a, about a one-week period or two-week period, <coughs> we, we, I couldn't even get to our church. I had to go a long ways away because one of the roads uh, was completely flooded. And so we went a real long way. But everybody that came to church, we, we picked up. <coughs> and uh, what, what was I going to say about that? Huh? Oh, so everybody was Spanish, so I thought, well, I'm going to preach in Spanish. And I, I started speaking in Spanish, and I, I said, uh, you know, talk about excusados. And, and actually, the word was excusas, excuses. But I was preaching about toilets. <laughs> and I wonder why everybody's laughing at me. <laughs> I, said, I said the wrong word. <laughs> so I thought, I better preach in English. Because <laughs> most of them could understand English anyway. So anyway, that happens. <clears throat> we need God's power. By the way, I didn't have God's power. wasn't a good example of God's power. <laughs> uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4 uh, and verse 12. Let me get back on the subject here. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, notice that. That's the example I'm supposed to be. In the words I speak, in conversation, that's my behavior. In charity, that's my love. In spirit, in faith, in purity. Let no man despise thy youth. No, I'm not young, not too young. I'm only 75. <laughs> let, let, <coughs> listen, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm still kicking. <laughs> but, uh, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example. We're supposed to be examples, amen, to those around us. And I like what it says there in word, you know, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. You know that song? Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart. So it says in word and conversation, that's your behavior. In charity, that's your love. Be, that, be an example. In spirit, in faith, in purity. Uh, I just love that. And, and that's what we're supposed to be, that example that the world around us needs, that our family needs. So be the example that your family, that people around you need. <coughs> now let me ask you a question. <coughs> what kind of example are you? I did. I, I'm not trying to embarrass anyone, but listen. Sometimes we do fail, don't we? But when you fail, do you, can you say, "You know, I blew it. I was wrong." Would you, will you forgive me, man? You know, getting it right <coughs> is such an important part of the Christian walk. You know, in Acts chapter one, verse three, it says, "All power is given unto me. Go ye therefore and teach all nations." So. How is your behavior, how does it exemplify Jesus Christ? I hope, I hope you're working on that because it is something we have to work on. Number two, can you think of exact examples of how you conducted yourself in adversity <clears throat> in a way that brought God the glory? And big problem comes along. Do you fall apart or can you trust God? <clears throat> I've often quoted this po poem um, Lord, let me live from day to day in such a self-forgetful way that even when I kneel to pray, my prayer shall be for others. Help me in all the work I do to ever be sincere and true and know that all I do for you must needs be done for others. And when my work on earth is done and my new work in heaven's begun, may I forget the crown I've won while thinking still of others. Others, Lord, yes, others, let this my motto be. Help me to live for others that I may live like thee. That's what God wants. That's, that's the recipe for joy for a believer. Number four, the power to have victory over Satan in the flesh. I'm going to just give you the verses because we're going to run out of time if I don't. <clears throat> First Peter 5, 8. Anybody, who knows that? Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary who? The devil. As a roaring lion <clears throat> walketh about 
seeking whom they may what? Devour. The Bible says this, Ephesians 6, 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may stand against the wiles of what? The devil. The, so you can stand, stand against the trickery, the deceitfulness, the treachery of Satan. Put on the whole armor. What's the armor of God? The helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, your loins girt about with truth, your feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace. <clears throat> God wants us to put on the whole armor of God so we can stand against the wiles of the devil. <clears throat> look, look at Romans chapter 8, uh, f- 1 verse, chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, please. I'll say it right eventually. <clears throat> and one thing good about getting old, you have an excuse for your feebleness. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good excuse. <clears throat> Romans chapter 7, verse 18 For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. What? No, that's what it says. For to will is present with me. That means to do my will. Not his will. To will, to do my thing is what's present in me. But how to perform that which is good I find not. Paul, Paul was talking about this wrestling match he has with himself. You, you ever wrestle with yourself about, boy, I knew I should have done the right, I did the wrong thing. Man, how many times have I had to get on the phone and say, hey, look, i got to apologize. I, would you forgive me for da-da-da, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> how often have I had to say that to my wife? No. <laughs> Gee, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, don't be so agreeable. <coughs> okay. <coughs> but now, Paul said, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. So I need God's power if I'm going to have, if I'm going to have something that's worthwhile in my life. How do I get that power? How do I get God's power? Number one, through preaching. I'll, I'll read the verse for you. 1 Corinthians 1.18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it's the what? Power of God. Hey, it's the power of God. Why? Because we're saved. We've got God's power. We can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth us. We don't have to say, I can't do it. I can through God's power. Galatians 5.16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill what? The lust of the flesh. Boy, you guys are well, well taught. You should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh wants to fulfill its lusts. But if we're walking in the Spirit, we're walking with the Lord, we're not going to want to do whatever, what the world does. We're not going to live like the world does. We're not going to talk like the world. We're not going to do the things the world does. Number five, a life worth living comes from hang, having God's power in one's life. And just let me conclude with a couple of thoughts here. In John 10:10, 10, 10, Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and that you might have it more, what? Abundantly. God doesn't want us to have a meager existence. He doesn't want us just to survive. He wants us to have a rich life. Now, my name's Rich. Okay. <laughs> I, like that. I like that name, <laughs> Richard. <laughs> but no, he wants us to be rich, not just in name, but in, in action. He wants us to have the fullness of Christ. He wants us to live a holy life. That I can't do that without God's help. <clears throat> having God's power in my life. That's so important. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you know it. I have to turn to it because I know it, but I can't. You can help me start it. If any man be in Christ, he's a what? New creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That's 2 Corinthians. I'm in 1 Corinthians. No wonder I couldn't find it. <clears throat> yeah, how many have you done that sometime? Okay, 2 Corinthians it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? New creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I'm glad I'm a new creature. Yeah. It's not fun getting old, is it? No, no you're not old. <laughs> but we're new creatures in Christ. Amen? It, 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 by the way, it's, it's new every day. It's not, not that I have to, oh, I'm just an old person. There's nothing I can do for God. Oh, yeah. As long as you're kicking, you can still do something for God. Amen. Amen? We can still serve God. We, we, we can't give that excuse. 
Paul said in the Roman church, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you what? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Present your body a living sacrifice. That's not easy because it means, hey, I took that smack in the face one time from my lost guy, and I walked toward him. I said, God love you. He was bigger than I was, and he's strong, too, some big steel worker, I think. And, and he, I started walking toward him. I said, God loves you. And he started backing up because <laughs> I had God's power. But I you know, still have to take abuse sometimes. Do, look, at this, look at the scriptures. Did Paul take any abuse? prison, beaten, uh, uh, all these different things that he went through. Why? Because he loved God. Because he's willing to take a stand. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is reasonable service. Now listen, this is the conclusion. I want you to listen carefully. How's God's power manifested in your life? How's God's power manifested in your life? In other words, can somebody see? Not, I don't think we're going to live in such a way. You see, I'm a holy person. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Who's that, that one lady, remember, in, in um, Hampshire Heights? She said, I'm, I'm a holy person. She says, my sleeves come down to my wrists. My dress goes down to my ankles. I'm, I'm a just a, I'm a good person. But she, she, she missed the boat. Yeah. The Bible says there's none that doeth good. No, not one. All we like sheep have gone astray. Amen. We're all sinners. Saved by grace. Praise God. But we're not perfect. And we've, we've, uh, thank God we've, we've still got room to grow. So, number one, how is your relationship with God? Number two, how is your relationship with your family? Because I, I, because I think it's important. Listen, reach out to people that, whether they reach out to you or not, reach out to them. Give them a jingle. Give them a call. Stop and visit them. Let them know, hey, I love you. I'm praying for you. Don't give up on people, amen? And then number three, are you being the influence, a good influence on people you meet? I love, I love that, that those, those programs you have, passing out these, these, uh, ba- these, these, these school things, school supplies, yeah, backpacks. That's wonderful. What an opportunity to reach people with the gospel, reach people for Christ. You know, the, the, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you people. You're not, you're not lazy. You're not saying, well, let somebody else do it. No, you're doing the job, and I thank God for that. I praise God for your, your willingness to do that. And, and listen, it costs money. Somebody has to pay for all that stuff. Right. Well, I know who does. These people sitting in the pew here pays for it. And I, and I praise the Lord for your gracious giving. And then, then, then are we victorious in the battles with the devil? Man, the devil won't leave you alone. He doesn't quit. Does he quit just because you're a little older? No, the devil's still trying to defeat you. He still wants to discourage you. He still wants to render you ineffective. Listen, if he can cause you to lose your temper or use bad language or to not be a good example as a Christian, he's accomplished his purpose. We have to keep, keep fighting the devil, amen? I'm glad that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. And we have to remember that. Do you and your family and friends have a life that's worth living? A life that's worth living. <clears throat> because really, we, we want to have, have a walk with God that reflects Christ. We want to be a testimony wherever we go, whatever we do, whatever we say, that people can look at us and say, hey, there's a believer. And I don't, we don't want to walk around like we're a goody two-shoes because we, we're all sinners saved by grace. But we want to be a good testimony. We want to be a good testimony. We don't want to be somebody that's not, you know, say, that speaks out of both sides of his mouth. We don't want to be a hypocrite. We want to be a hypocrite. So I want to challenge us today. We need the power of God in our lives. I need the power of God to have a good relationship with him. I need his power. I need it to have a right relationship with my family to be the best influence on others that I meet and be victorious in my life against the devil and to have a life that's worth living. I need God's power to do that, and you do too. And if listen, if you haven't been experiencing that, it's available, amen? He, he makes it available to everybody. He doesn't want anybody to be powerless. Yep. If you're a believer, he wants you to have his power. And I hope that you'll trust him 
and, and, and memorize scripture having to do with the power of God. And, and uh, that you can experience the joy of the Lord that comes from utilizing the power of God in your life. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these dear ones. Thank you for your word. It is a light, light into our uh, lamp into our feet and a light into our path. And uh, Father, I do pray that you forgive our sins. Lord, if you've convicted someone, uh, sometimes we, we, we do things we're disappointed about in ourselves. We're ashamed sometimes. And I'm glad that we can get right with you. But Lord, help us to have the courage to get right with others as well. Help us to go to a child or a parent or a neighbor and, and ask forgiveness. Lord, it might be the door opening for us having an opportunity to bring, bring them to Christ. Father, we love you. We praise you for this day and thank you for these dear ones and pray that you'd help us just to have the kind of walk with you that's going to be meaningful even today uh, that we might be able to share the gospel with someone and uh, lighten someone's burden. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please stand with me. Our hymn of invitation will be Just As I Am. <laughs> 